Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Tony Green, who's a Senior Principal Solutions Engineer at Puppet. Puppet is a leading IT automation company that enables teams to innovate rapidly with security and compliance baked in. Tony joins us today to discuss how organizations can use automation to implement the Essential 8 maturity model recommended by the Australian Cybersecurity Centre. Thanks for joining us today, Tony, and welcome to The Jam. Thanks very much. Great to be here. So, you know, the Australian Cybersecurity Centre has created what's called um, this Essential 8 Maturity Model, uh, which promises to be a strong foundation for cybersecurity. Can you explain what that is and what that means for organisations? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the key word there that you used was foundation. Um, it's the, the Essential 8 is, is very much that. It's eight rules that are considered to be the, the very bedrock of establishing a, a secure presence online uh, to be able to protect organizations and to be able to make sure that people are operating in uh, as, as best they can in a secure fashion. And the, uh, the essential light came out in, in about 2017 and it's now actually being mandated for a lot of the uh, you know, government agencies, uh, but it's also being used by non-government agencies as sort of a, a, a foundational standard that people are starting to operate within. And so recently, Puppet participated um, in the Chief Information Security Officer Conference in Melbourne, and you discussed how organisations can implement this model at scale across the private and public cloud. What are some of the security and governance challenges of working in a hybrid model? Um, whenever you're looking at a set of security standards. Um, it would be fantastic if we could just go in and say, we're gonna enforce these standards over absolutely everything and there are zero exceptions. We know everything is gonna be maintained this way and we know the state of the environment is always gonna remain static. That's, that's Nirvana, we're never going to be there. Finding a mechanism by which you can consistently uh, analyze, report and track any sort of deviations and know whether or not those deviations are approved uh, or whether or not they're, they're unapproved is fundamental to being able to actually have that level of control. That's hard enough when you're operating within a single environment, when you've just got a single data center or a, you know, a single VM in, uh, uh, farm. As soon as you start looking at that scaled across multiple different uh, cloud platforms, uh, hybrid models, uh, even down to old legacy stuff in a data center, it becomes extremely difficult. There are vendor specific tools there are cloud specific tools that that work in those ways but unifying that data pulling all of that together and having a consistent approach to be able to handle those exceptions handle that reporting and more importantly handle the remediation of those issues is what we see as being one of the largest problems out there at the moment so how can organizations you know address these difficulties we see that realistically tools, infrastructure as code, uh, security as code, compliance as code is, is where people need to go. It, it is not a problem that you, we, can, uh, we can address purely by uh, having humans involved because as we've seen by the stats, a lot of the time, um, I think about 30% of, uh, of the issues that were reported over the last couple of years were down to human error. Um, humans make mistakes, especially again, when we're mm. talking about scale and when we're talking about working across all of these different environments, having a, a process that you can define these rules as code and then have them automatically audited and enforced means that you can, you can really start to make, uh, make use of the skills you have in defining these standards um, without having to have people actually go and, and click button, yeah, click keyboards and, and use their mouse to actually make this happen. So how is Puppet working with Australian companies to successfully navigate these difficulties that we're talking about um, in scaling cybersecurity consistency? So Puppet obviously has, has been around for a long time, uh, has been foundational in, in the start of the DevOps movement. And really, since day one, has been a tool to enforce compliance. What compliance has meant over time is has changed. It, it used to be what whatever the system administrator said they wanted their machines to look like. It puppet made them compliant. As the as the world has evolved and as how, as cybersecurity has come on, 
Puppet mm. has taken a, a leading role in addressing the implementation of those, those compliance standards. We have the mechanism to work across all cloud platforms, on-premise, including virtual and physical machines, a uh, wide range of operating systems. We also have a very strong offering in terms of um, being able to deal with um, the bespoke nature of certain machines, snowflake machines, where mm. you need to have uh, certain policies turned on that you might not want everywhere else. But we can surface that to make it visible. We can allow auditors, SecOps teams to be able to say, we know that this machine is you know, slightly outside of policy. Here's why it's outside of policy, but it's only for these small things and we'll maintain that. Um, we also have published our own uh, enforcement modules to be able to actually lock, uh, to secure machines using uh, standards like the, uh, the CIS standards. That's a, a huge step forward for, for the enforcement of security and cybersecurity as, as automation, as code. And so what are some of the trends that you expect to see across IT teams in Australian organisations, you know, as they need to secure and run increasing volumes of technology? I've, I've worked in the, the industry for, for a long time and I, I, there's been a, a big swing backwards and forwards over time between the need for speed and agility and the need for audit and control. Um, that's been made even more visible over recent years with the advent of DevOps, people wanting to be able to move fast, to be able to put the control of provisioning environments, provisioning platforms in the hands of developers, which is fantastic. It means we're much more agile. What that does mean, though, is now we have a whole range of people that aren't necessarily as familiar with uh, security standards and with operating standards and with audit and, and compliance frameworks. What, what I have seen is, is a lot of people a lot of organizations who've moved very far towards the DevOps side and are now having to come back towards the, the compliance side. What mm -hmm. we're working with uh, with Puppet is to effectively provide almost like a, a, a roll cage and a safety harness for these, uh, these developers in their cars, enabling them to go as fast as they can, but giving them that protection to say, you have these have the freedom to do what you need to do, but there are controls and there are boundaries around what, what it is. So you can't step outside of those standards and when any standards are breached, they're highlighted and either remediated or, or escalated up to the right level. We've been working with companies like uh, the ANZ Bank uh, recently to, to streamline their audit process mm. and rolled out puppet across the uh, board there. They've been a long time customer and their audit process in terms of managing external, external and internal auditors has been massively reduced by the use of, of puppet code to highlight where things are compliant and more importantly, to be able to highlight to, to auditors where exceptions have happened and where we've gone in and actually made the remediation. Well, thanks Tony so much for explaining the Essential 8 maturity model and how automation has you know, a big part to play in that. Um, it's been great having you on the jam. Yeah, it's been great to be here. Thanks very much for your time.